All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. Today we're talking Jade and Ivy. It has to happen. I get too much. I get too much here and here and here random ass comments about Jade and Ivy on this channel. You know, one one comment will be like, "I really want them to draft Jade and Ivy because he seems like a stud." Someone will respond to it. It's like, you know, you're a freaking moron, bro. We don't need a shooting guard. That's what sucks about it. Um, that's what sucks about it. And we're going to talk about Jade and Ivy here today. The reason it sucks is he's a shooting guard, right? We know that. So the video will probably be titled something like, you know, what happens if the Rockets draft Jade and Ivy? Well, they'd figure it out. Um, but like I said, what really kind of does suck is that he isn't a point guard. Um, and then, you know, obviously we have Jalen Green. And even to add more to it, you know, there's a lot of people who believe KPJ should go back to his natural position of a shooting guard. So it's like in that situation, we technically have like three true shooting guards. There is a thought process that maybe just maybe you could put KPJ onto the bench, still give him like almost 30 minutes a night, 30 minutes a night. Um, the issue would be with closing games, if he would come into the starting lineup with, you know, Jalen, Jaden and himself, that's horribly defensively, like just so bad defensively. So that's an issue. You'd need like a big ass body and maybe like even like a Rico Bear down below in the center. And then you'd need somebody not named Christian Wood. Like there's just a lot that goes into it, which makes this so difficult because Jaden Ivy last season uh, with Purdue, I've got a stats here 17.3 points per game, 4.9 rebounds, 3.1 assists. Jaden can play both sides of the ball. He's not afraid of big time moments and he like just blows by everybody. Like the perfect comparison for Jaden Ivy is John ja Morant. It's just not as much of a point guard. 3.1 assists per game is actually not too bad. Um, and there's some thought process. Like I said, maybe Jalen Green can split some some playmaking, some ball handling duties. So maybe you shy away from having your stereotypical, you know, point guard, and you have just this interesting backcourt of KPJ, Jaden Ivy, and Jalen Green. It would be probably one of the most fun young rosters in the NBA. And I'm sure once they started clicking, um, they would be one of the most lethal fast-paced teams in the NBA but like I said defensively there's just so many issues uh, Jaden is he's just so good bro I, I urge you after this video to go watch his highlights because when you hear the comparisons to John Morant you think like all right that's cool um, you know especially with the year Ja just had like you know yeah that's cool he, he he's like John Morant but you know it, it's a different position I don't really believe it and you know we don't need him and I'm telling you this and I know everyone who comments why they want to draft Jaden Ivey has seen Jaden Ivey clips because I guarantee you you go up and you look up Jaden Ivey highlights right now you will come back to this video and you will be like damn you're kind of right <laughs> like that's it's kind of difficult almost now the good news is is it's so like you know, Paolo, uh, he's so enticing as well offensively. Him, Jalen Green, him, KPJ, I think they could really do some damage. Chet Holmgren, so interesting as well. I mean, his confidence is through the roof as well. Like, he says he's going to be a 50-40-90 guy in the NBA and be one of the best players at his position. He can do almost everything. And then you have Jabari, who is just as enticing, just as intriguing, and it's like... I'm so happy Houston is where they are right now because having that third pick, it gives them enough flexibility, but it doesn't give them enough of like, all right, we, it, we, we're going to go out and we're going to draft Jaden Ivey. So say the Rockets go out, they draft Jaden Ivey and they didn't have pick number three. They had pick number one or pick number two. There's so much pressure on that player. The good news is this draft class seems like they soak that in. What we saw from Jaden Ivey last season at Purdue, this man was not afraid of big time moments whatsoever. Jalen Green isn't either. So we're chilling with that in that regard, but you do worry with some players like <clears throat> James Harden, Ben Simmons, some would argue Steph Curry <laughs> for a different day. Uh, but you want a player who isn't going to be afraid. You want a player who relishes in that opportunity, in that moment. They're like, give me the damn ball. 
I'm winning this game. I'm going to put the city on the map. I'm going to just bang. You know what I'm saying? So Jalen Green fits that mold perfectly. Jaden can also play a little bit of defense. Um, I would say he's a better defender than when Jalen came out of the draft or yeah, out of the draft, out of the G League. I would say he plays better defense than KPJ. Um, or even if they if he didn't, the potential is higher, I would say, just because of his athleticism. But this dude is so fast, bro. And um, I view him almost as a... It's like a it's like a Jalen Suggs pick last year on crack. Like last year, obviously most people, you know, we had the second pick. So most people are thinking, all right, maybe Cade falls, right? If Cade doesn't fall, maybe we trade up for Cade. You're thinking, all right, Jalen Green, kind of a lock at number two. Um, if you weren't thinking that though, you know, you're thinking Evan Mobley, Cade, or Jalen Green, and that was pretty much it. Um, there weren't even really any thoughts about drafting Scotty Barnes, about Josh Giddy. The only other player who was in the loop was Jalen Suggs. To, like, you're just average NBA media, and I, I effed that up as well, because I didn't even think of Scotty Barnes being better than Jalen Suggs, because I was an idiot last year. First time covering the draft. But Jalen Suggs was... You know, he, he's primarily a playmaker. He's primarily a ball handler, right? But he had a successful career at Gonzaga. He had that huge shot in the Final Four. And, you know, I do vividly remember making several videos on why Houston should draft Jalen Suggs, why they shouldn't draft. Like, you know, a video like this. Like, all right, let's talk about some reasons why they should draft Suggs. Like in today's video, we're talking about some reasons they could or should draft Jaden Ivey. Some of them... When you compare like Ivy to Paolo, I would say, you know, you have Paolo up here, but that doesn't make Jade and Ivy like a sorry ass player. I feel like Jade and Ivy's just getting a lot of disrespect, primarily in the Rockets world, because if you look at like a mock draft, Sacramento, if I'm a Kings fan right now, I, I'm ecstatic. I have a. We actually have a Kings fan here live. Hey, I'm a Kings fan, and, and we have the fourth pick, and I can't wait to draft Jaden Ivey because another man's trash is another man's treasure. But like I said, I would view Jaden Ivey as like significantly better than Jalen Suggs, like just significantly better than him. But it, it's a very similar situation last year where we had to deal with kind of like, all right, positions. You know, Do you want to draft players based off of positional needs? Or do you want to draft players based off of what they offer your squad? I would imagine Raphael Stone is going to draft players based off of ceilings and potential and what he likes. I highly, highly doubt that Raphael Stone is going to draft a player just based off of positional needs. So we saw that last year, dude. You know, we really did see that last year. Like, you could have draft you could have drafted Jalen Suggs at one, put KPJ at the two, or you know tried and figured something out. Went out and got Seng, or Seng, brother went out and got Shangun, but still dress you know Josh Christopher like you know what I'm saying. I highly doubt Raphael Stone. He's a smart man. I highly doubt he is going to stay away from Jaden Ivey considerations just because he is a shooting guard, right? He's trying to scheme stuff. Like if he's that big on Jaden Ivey, he's thinking, all right, how can we make it work? How can we make it work? What are we going to do next season? You know, he's doing it with all the players. But like I said, Paolo is kind of where, where what's projected. Um, I wouldn't be surprised because he look, apparently he's been slimming down to like 235-ish, 235, 240, or some, somewhere in between that range. And I wouldn't be surprised if his draft stock goes up significantly and him and Jabari are picks one or two. Like Jabari goes one, Paolo goes two, and then we get the opportunity to draft Chet. So it's like... You know, take all this stuff with a grain of salt. Um, but I just, I, I want to try and sway your guys' opinions on Jaden Ivey because he is a really good basketball player. And even if he doesn't go to Houston, or even if you don't think Houston should draft him, I, I don't think that, I just think he's getting way too much disrespectful slander from Rocket fans for just, just because he's a shooting card, where it's like, he's a good player, like, appreciate him. You know what I'm saying? So that's it for today. Hit the like button, hit that sub button. Most importantly, go ahead, drop a comment down below. What are your thoughts on, on the Rockets draft in Jaden Ivey? Peace.